there. This is Bonnie McCaffrey. Welcome back. This is our eighth episode of the vidcast um, and it is Bonnie's Creative Quilting Adventures and what I thought I would do this month is have a two-part segment. The first part is going to be an interview with Alex Anderson and then after that what I'm going to do for you is a demonstration for doing the bindings on your quilt completely by machine well almost completely by machine and then I'll show you some creative techniques for embellishing that but first I ran into Alex Anderson at the airport and she suggested hey why don't we do an interview for her podcast and then we did a taping for my vidcast so you can hear the, the interview on her podcast at her website but first here we have um, an, an interview with Alex Anderson at the airport and you're going to get to hear about a new book that she has coming out. So come, let's go see what Alex has to say. Hi there, this is Bonnie McCaffrey and I have bumped into Alex <laughs> Anderson so we are going to get an interview with Alex to see what she is up to. Now Simply Quilts is, they're not do, taping any more segments of nope, Simply Quilts. Nope, over, done, done. So what are you up to now? You know it's great because everybody thinks I'm retired. They go, what are you doing with all your spare time? And I'm like, you have got to be kidding. Spare time. Oh no, doesn't <laughs> exist. In fact, should we tell them where we are? Oh, we're <laughs> at the airport. I, I mean, where else would you run into Alex Anderson? That's exactly. the airport. We're both at the airport. Is my lipstick on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look great. Well, I am just super busy um, writing books. In fact, I have a book that has just come out on machine quilting. Yes. I am a machine quilter now. I'll always be a hand quilter at heart, but I suffered through the old-fashioned way, and 150 hours later, I'm no Diane Gaudinsky, but I can do it. I don't <laughs> so, think any of us will no. ever be Diane. She really is incredible, but tell me more about this book. So you're going to train people and teach yes. people how to do machine quilting. Yes, it's just like start quilting, only it's start machine quilting. Oh. And, hey, it was traumatic. When C&T told me I had to write it, I'm like, ah, it took me... It seems like it has been 18 years. It was so traumatic. But now, actually, when I sit down, I'm not freaked out. You know what it's all about, Bonnie? What's it about? It's all about up here. Oh. I, it's all about up here. It's a head thing. Getting your mind straight on it. Yeah, yeah, let me tell you a story. When I was a little girl, I go to bed at night, and we were in a post-World War II house, and I had a little itty-bitty closet, and the doors of that closet, the door, that's how small it was, had to be closed because if it was open, the dancing alligators would come out. Oh my gosh, dancing alligators. <laughs> they were Mardi Gras things, you know? Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I would shut it and I'd sleep. And now as an adult, I think, what if I had left that door open? Ooh. And I had learned to dance with the alligators. And I think so many times we get freaked out over things that we shouldn't be. No. And so no. it was all up here. Mm -hmm. So I had a mental adjustment and I learned how to machine quilt. So how long do you think it took for you to get comfortable with it? Well, 150 hours later, again, I'm still no Diane Gaudinsky. Well. <laughs> but it, it's interesting, too, because the Bernina Stitch Regulator came out at that time, right in the middle, and I had to have a meeting with myself and say, okay, am I going to cheat or not? And I decided, no, I'm going to suffer through the old-fashioned way. What I know now is that if I had used the Bernina Stitch Regulator, it would have cut it down to one-tenth. Right. You know? It's so. a good tool, but not everybody has it, so it's great that you have a book right. that makes it right. for everybody. Right. And you also have podcasts, which I'm sure right. everybody knows about, but um, the podcast, you get to interview some really wonderful personalities. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <Yay. laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. And I appreciate that, and what's so cool is that it's been on for about a year now and when I started doing it you know three people in the room of 200 would raise their hand right. and now it's you know 25 50 so if you don't have an mp3 player or an iPod right get one you will love it but love you it. don't have to have an no, iPod don't. to listen to these because you can listen to Alex's podcast on the internet and, and they're free and watch you and watch me <laughs> Wow, we're going to miss Alex on Simply Quilts, but she always has something brewing. She has teamed up with Ricky Timms for an internet TV show. And these will begin to air on April 2nd. They are called The Quilt Show. And you can find more information about that at thequiltshow.com. And not only is this a place where we're going to have internet TV of a quilt show, but there's also blogs and chat rooms, and it sounds like a fun place to go look. So go take a look and see how that is. So now let's get to, um, I'm going to show you how to do bindings completely by machine. If your binding 
around the perimeter is more than 40 inches, you're going to need to connect some strips together. So what I've done is I've cut these strips to be two inches wide. They're going to go right sides together and we're going to position them at a right angle to one another. So now if we stitch at an angle like this, when we open this up, we have one continuous strip with a diagonal seam connecting them. There is a little bit of bulk here with these two triangles here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Okay, now we're going to attach this to the back of the quilt. So I have switched to my walking foot and we're going to put this binding strip right side to the back side of the quilt, which is also right sides together. And we're going to position it so that it's not in a corner and we're going to position it so that there would be five inches that would be still need to be stitched. So we're going to start a little ways in. And as I'm stitching, what I want to do is I want to pull slightly on that binding strip. And that simple step of just pulling slightly on that binding strip really helps that quilt to lay flatter. That is providing, of course, that you've quilted it and it already is nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this binding strip. So here I am, I'm approaching the corner here, and using the edge of the foot of my walking foot here gives me a seam allowance of just under one half of an inch. So I want to make sure that I'll stop about just under a half of an inch from this corner here. So I'm going to put a pin in at that point, and I'm going to stitch right to where the point of that pin is. And I want to stop with that needle down, and then I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to stitch right off of the edge of that corner there. And then I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to just pull it out of the machine a little bit. I'm going to fold it back up so that it's along that line of stitching that I've just stitched. And now I'm going to fold it down, and the edge of the binding should be lined up with the edge of the quilt there, and then this edge of the binding should be lined up with the edge that is right here. And the top edge, what we want to happen, is that we want that fold to be just a little bit further from the edge of the quilt. So I'm going to continue my stitching using the edge of the foot lined up with the edge of the quilt. Now I'm almost back to where I started, but I have about a 5 to an 8 inch space there. What I'm going to do now is I want to connect the beginning and the ends of these strips. So I'm going to give a little slight tug on the starting strip, and I'm going to fold that so it forms a right angle. Um, and it, it folds this at a diagonal, and I want to finger press that so I get a little bit of a crease there. I'm going to take the ending strip, and I'm going to give a slight tug on that, and I'm going to lay that right over top of this strip here. And so what I want to do now is I want to fold this back and pin these two strips together. And now what I'm going to do, you kind of have to fold the quilt when you try to stitch these two strips together. What we're going to be doing is stitching right on that fold line there. And now we want to open this back up and make sure that this is not stitched too tight and it's not pulling, but, there, but it's a nice, clean, um, continuous line there. And you want to check that before you cut off these extra tails here. And now what we need to do is we need to go back and finish attaching this to the back of the quilt. So now you can ha see that I've pressed this nice and flat. And as I was pressing this, I didn't worry about pressing the corner. So I just pressed under the edges um, up to the corner there. Now, now let me show you what we need um, to do with the corners here to get really nice mitered corners. I want to pull that binding over and make sure that it's going to cover the stitching there. Now I'm going to bring this binding, the folded binding, across, and I want to make sure that I push, all, push that point out nice with my fingertip in there. And I'm going to bring this and fold this and give it a pinch all the way down here. And what you're going to see happen here is there's a nice 45 degree angle that happens. Now I like to put a pin right in here, in the binding only, but this pin is right along the edge of the quilt. And that's going to be the place where this binding strip is going to fold back up over the other. And I'm going to fold this back up, making sure that I keep that really nice 45 degree angle. And what needs to happen here is this folded corner right here needs to meet the binding edge on this line here. So we want that to match really nicely, so I'll go ahead and pin that. I'm going to select a blind hem stitch, and that is a stitch that goes stitch, 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 bite. And what we need to do is we need to alter that blind hem stitch so that it's a little bit shorter and it's a little bit narrower, because that bite stitch we want 
Um, all of the straight stitches will fall on the quilt, and that bite stitch is just going to bite a tiny bit into that binding there. We also need to reverse the stitch, because right now the bite stitch is going to the left, and we want it to go to the right, so it's going into the binding. And what I have loaded on the machine is that I have a clear, uh, actually I have smoke colored um, YLI Wonder Invisible Thread. Well, it looks pretty good. Now remember how I said that you could do it almost completely by machine. Well, there's one place that you're going to have to stitch by hand, and that's this little corner right here and also back here. And that you just want to do a nice blind stitch so that people can't see it. So let me show you some things that we can do for some creative embellishments to this binding. This is just a single strand that has been couched down with invisible thread, but here are a couple of two colors that have been put together and couched down together as they're gone through. And then this example here is done with five different co colors of the candlelight all lined up in a row so that they are couched down all at once. Now let's see what happens if we load some heavier thread into the bobbin and do some work on the, the binding. What I've done here is I have the quilt with the right side down and I'm going to use the line of stitching that's showing on the back as a guideline for where I want to stitch. And I'm, um, I've loaded the heavier thread in the bobbin and the bobbin tension has been adjusted so it just pulls smoothly with a little bit of resistance. Now when you come to the end you want to cut it and leave a tail because this tail you're going to um, thread into a large eyed needle and thread into the layers of the quilt. Just regular straight stitching in the bobbin. Here we've done a decorative stitch in the bobbin. Now I found it interesting that as I was playing with these stitches that I had a, the choice that I could have the stitching go onto the quilt or I could have it go onto the binding. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our vidcast this month, the demonstration on how to do the bindings completely by machine, well, almost completely by machine, and then some of the embellishments with the candlelight yarn, either couching that thread down or using it in the bobbin. You can find the candlelight yarn and the YLI Wonder Invisible Thread on our website, and I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have in line for you then. It's going to be exciting. Thanks for being with me.